Okay, so we're going to be sewing each of these seams together across the cup at a quarter of an inch. Now it's important that we have a right and a left. And if you're using the same size cup for right and left, it's also very important that you make sure that you have them indicated right and left, otherwise you could end up with two right cups or two left cups. So what I like to do is I will take one, flip it that way, take one, flip it that way, so we know the directions that they're going, and take this one and flip it this way. And this one, I do not see that there is a right and a wrong side. Um, there could be, um, see we just want to double check. I don't have my glasses on, so I don't really see it. I'm also going to use this little foot that I got. It actually has this kind of cool little guide. I got these on Amazon. I was like looking for different unique things to help me sew better um, because I'm really, really sloppy in my sewing. Like I know I can sew very, very well, but I just get really, really sloppy sometimes. And this will help me sew a little bit more straight. Okay, so I'm going to start with these two together. I'm going to start with, and then pin those two together also. And I would also suggest sewing from the front of the cup to the outside. Um, there is a little extra space on this top cup here. You can probably just chop it off, but it allows for some kind of corrections that you can make. Um, so it's technically about a quarter of an inch too long right here. Um, but sometimes based on our fabric, we actually do need that space. So I'm going to line right here. And so you see I'm using the edge of the foot as my guide. I'm going to get that in there and I'm even going to, so for this, because this fabric doesn't have any stretch, I'm just going to sew. Okay, I'm going to take it, the edges along with each other. It's like edge to edge. Um, it's actually stuff sews very, very nicely. Um, I did not do a back stitch at the, the end, and I'm actually not going to do a back stitch at the other side because what happens is sometimes when you're working with these thinner fabrics, the um, uh, what do you call it? The thread pulls. And so after this, I'm going to make sure I have a tail on the end and I'm just going to stretch that seam out. You see, I'm just kind of manipulating it a little bit at a time. So right before it goes into the machine. And so this one, it looks like I have about a sixteenth of an inch over on the one side. Um, and that looks fine to me. So we're going to pull that. So give myself a tail and then you can take and kind of go with your fingernails and kind of stretch it a little bit. We don't want to clip the threads yet. We're actually going to take it to the iron and deal with that. Okay. Oops, oops, oops. Okay, keep that there. Okay. Start this again up to kind of where my needle is. I'm starting in about a quarter of an inch, just a little bit, um, so it doesn't get eaten. And if it does, I've got the thread here, I can try and give it a little tug and a pull. Um, if your machine is eating your fabric, which it's totally doable, it does it for half of my fabrics, um, you can get a little piece of tissue paper or even throw the, paper, the pattern underneath it, um, just in the beginning, just so it has something to grab onto, so it doesn't get pulled into the machine. And so I will do that with the paper sometimes. So you see I'm only kind of paying attention to what's going immediately in and then I'm slowly kind of pivoting. Okay, so I'm just going to continue sewing, pivoting it a tiny little bit at a time. Because I want those edges to line up. Okay. Again, Ooh, that goes on this side. And so we are, we're going to pull and kind of stretch that seam back out. Okay, oh, 
So that's how it was looking. All right, so we're doing that. Then we're going to come here to this. So this bottom one is really easy to get flipped over because, and actually it can be easy to get any of these flipped over. So just be careful. <laughs> okay, now I've got this curved piece in here. I'm just going to do a little bit, see how now it's, as I'm coming around this curve, I'm making sure that I'm trying to like make my fabric go straight, but it's curved. So I'm just going to, about a quarter of an inch right before it goes underneath the foot is where I'm lining it up to. Been pretty well behaved. There we go. Okay, we have one cup. Let me get this one. And it may be useful and helpful if you do baste the whole pattern together. Um, I have been sewing since I was about five years old. So um, I can be pretty accurate when I need to be. And right now I'm actually being a little more accurate than I usually am, so. Um, but it does take practice. It is not easy to do this. Because you've got to control both, make sure the fabric is not going into the machine slowly pivoting this fabric. I think I get a little bit loose on that end, but in general I'm actually very pleased with my seams. They're a whole lot straighter than they normally are, so definitely agree with that one. Okay, so I'm actually gonna try and press my seams open a little bit. Um, and what I've actually decided I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flip these over. And instead of putting like a seam covering on it, I am going to add velvet on top. Bright burgundy velvet on top of my seams to basically clean finish it. So then the inside of the cup will have no raw edges. So this will be on the outside. Um, and I will go to the iron and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm using my bra ham and I do have um, a, pat a free pattern, free pattern download and a tutorial on how to make this. This one I did, um, I actually used, um, my husband did a block of wood for me and the one in the video I actually, uh, I use beans, um, but you could use, you know, wood shavings. There's a lot of different things you can use. Um, I'm going to just take this kind of slowly, just because I want to make sure that it's looking good and it's not going to burn. This is nylon, so it should be a little bit more durable than the uh, polyester, but you still got to be careful. pressing my seams open. And you can try doing with a finger press, but it's not really gonna be that great, especially with the shear. You really wanna make sure it looks nice, especially with what we're gonna do next. Um, Cause I'm actually gonna need to trim this down to about half. Because my, uh, the velvet I'm gonna put over the seam is only three eighths of an inch, and because we sewed this at a quarter of an inch, it's going to be a total of a half an inch wide with that seam. Okay, okay that's looking really good. No puckers. And 
And then once I know for sure that this looks good, I can trim up the, the long threads. Some machines like to eat. They like to kind of gather the fabric a little bit. So I'm just going to try and avoid some of that. Steaming up the uh, camera. I'm not hitting it with my head too much. I know. And you might be asking, well, why didn't I trim the seam allowance down first and then iron? Have you ever tried to iron? Something that is an eighth of an inch wide is very, very difficult. Very difficult. So, <clears throat> I have played with it. I've done that before. Just not the ideal way to do it. Okay. This is looking good. If you want, we can always flip it over. Kind of double check it. But that looks really nice and smooth. Looks beautiful, and we are ready to go back to the machine. Okay, so we're going to be covering the seams, and this is going to be on the outside of the cup. Um, so it kind of looks a little bit finished. Now I actually had filmed this one and I totally screwed it up, so I took it, I am not showing that food footage, I redid it, and this is what it's going to be look like when it's done. So what I'm going to do right now is we're going to take this one and we need to trim our seam allowance back about halfway. And you don't want to cut it back too short or the seams could unravel. And be careful you don't cut your cup or you'll have to re-sew this. So this is going to leave a clean finish on the inside with no seams and the outside we're going to have decorative with the velvet trim. Okay, so what I'm starting is and this is a velvet, um, it's a stretch velvet. So I'm going to start sewing, and I like to do this with the most of my elastics, um, so that way you kind of get it in the machine so you're starting straight. And you have to do this really, really slowly and carefully. First of all, so we have it positioned correctly, but also that your stitching on the velvet is nice. Um, now I suppose if you have a matching color thread, it'd be a little bit less noticeable if you screw up. But I'm just going to try and do this. Hopefully talking isn't what's messed me up the first time. And if it does pucker a little bit, do not pull your elastic, whatever you do. Um, if it does pucker a little bit, um, we'll iron it afterwards and it should release those puckers to let it be a little bit nicer looking. Okay. Okay, I clearly did a better job on the first cup. Let me take that off. And when you're doing the second side, make sure that you're kind of pulling your fabric, that you don't have any um, pleats underneath it. We, we do not want any pleats. Okay, let's see. Oh, that looks 
looks pretty decent. Still not as good as I did on the first side, but it's still good. And I do have um, this velvet elastic on my website. This was kind of one of those things that I really wanted it. Wasn't really sure if it was something for my shop, but I wanted it, so I bought it, and it's available. Shows nothing underneath. Carefully. Okay, get the other side. see that there are some little puckers on here so what I'll do is I'm going to um, put it on the iron but I'm going to flip it over this way um, because if you put an iron on velvet it actually kind of flattens the um, what do we call it uh, the pile and you can always get a velvet iron um, an ironing board um, which I actually do have. I picked up from a factory years ago. It's just hanging here. I hardly ever use it, but I'm going to iron this side. So I'm going to iron that and we will come back to the next step. Thanks for watching. If you would like to have more content like this, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, or leave a comment below. Thank you very much.